In this WordPress custom fields tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add custom fields to your posts, and they're going to be applied to a theme, just a theme I found from a WordPress repository. We have to add some code to a child version of that theme to make those fields show up on the front end. But I'm going to show you how to add those fields to a post, how to make them show up on the front end, and then how to customize them with CSS to make them fit your theme or whatever look you were going for. And we're getting started right now. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, then start now by clicking subscribe. Then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And also, and make sure you sign up for the private WP Learning Lab Facebook group where we can hang out, ask questions, help each other get better at WordPress. There's a link in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. In this example, I'm gonna use a travel blog. I'm gonna find a theme in the WordPress repository. We're gonna add custom fields to the posts so that we can add additional data to each post. And my example is, if I was staying at a hotel somewhere, I'm going to want to add in what the weather was when I was there and how much it cost and how friendly the staff was and how clean it was. I'm going to add those four things as custom fields and we're going to output those onto the post and we're going to make it so that if we don't enter those things, they're not appearing on the front end. So we're not getting any blank entries. So only the custom fields we actually input will appear on the front end. And when we do input them, all the data is there. So the first thing we have to do is get a theme. So I'm going to head over to Appearance and Themes and then click on Add New. And again, this will work on any theme. So if you currently have a theme installed that you want to use, this is completely transferable to that theme. I'm just going to type in the search Travel Theme. And I'm just going to get this first one right here. Again, the theme doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use this first one as the example. Click on Install to install it. Click on Activate to activate it. Now I'm going to go to the front end and see if I can find a post to see what posts currently look like and see where maybe I want to add in my custom fields. So let's go to any one of these should be a post possibly. Maybe this one, travel content. None of these are actually active. So let's go to our posts in here. See if we can load up one of these posts. My best featured image. That sounds like a good one. Open that in a new tab. Okay, so here we have a regular old post. And this is how a post looks like in the theme right after it's installed. And this is the time when you wanna figure out where you wanna put your custom data. I think I might wanna add the weather in here. This is a nice blue box here. And it's nicely animated when you hover over it. And I'm just gonna add in more information. It's gonna add the weather that was there when I was staying at this location. And then maybe down below the featured image, I will include the other data, which is the cost, friendliness, and cleanliness. Now that we've figured out where the stuff should go, I did it pretty quick, this is just an example. So you might want to take a bit longer if, if it's really important that you know where it goes exactly and looks perfect. But now that we know where it goes, we're gonna head back into our post and click on edit. And the custom fields should be down below. Here's the custom fields meta box right here. If you don't see this custom fields meta box, scroll to the top of the page, click on screen options, and put a check mark beside this custom fields entry. And then that meta box should be appearing for you. And this is where we now enter our custom field data. This data includes two things. It includes the name for the field and the value for the field. The name is what we use in the back end for the programming. And the value is what's output on the front end of the website. And there's a bunch that are pre-made on your site, potentially, depending on your site and what you have going on on there. You may also have nothing in here. But either way, we want to click on Enter New. And I'm going to call my first one Weather. And I'm going to say it was Sunny. And there's our first custom field name and value pair entered. Now on the site, I'm going to have it so it says, before it says Sunny, I'm going to say the weather was colon and then Sunny. So it's not that I'm going to just output the word sunny. There's going to be more text on the page. There's going to be programmed into the page because it doesn't change. Because I'm always going to say the weather was, and I'm going to add in sunny, or the weather was rainy, or the weather was cloudy. You get the idea. I'm going to add another custom field. I'm going to call it cost. And I'm just going to add in maybe just dollar signs. I use that quite often. 
add another custom field, call it friendliness, um, and you also want to think about how you want to output this stuff. So for this example, I was just thinking I could have a sentence where I say the staff was and then have a blank where this data goes. So I could say the, the staff was very friendly. Or you could say they have very friendly staff. Or friendliness colon, and then just have the value. So you gotta think about how you wanna output on the page. This is all stuff you can change afterwards as well. But it's good to think about it while you're building this. So I'm just gonna say in here very friendly. And I'll figure out how I wanna output that later. Add another one and cleanliness, I'm gonna say uh, spotless is the cleanliness. And now we have all our custom fields. Click on add custom field just to make sure it's added. Now we have our four custom fields with four values. I'm gonna click on update post. And you might be wondering if you now have to input this data down here, this value pairs in every post, and yes you do. If you want them to appear in the post, you have to add them. The script that I've created for you, it will detect whether there is a value. If there isn't one, it's not gonna output whatever part that is. So if you have, for friendliness, the staff was very friendly as a sentence that appears in the page, if you didn't actually set a friendliness, that whole sentence won't appear. So you can add it to posts or not add it to posts, and the program or the, the script will display appropriately. But if you do want it on the post, you do have to add this every time. And if you're wondering where this information goes in the database, this is post metadata. I've linked to a tutorial up above in the card that tells you more about post metadata, what it is, where to find it. There's a lot of post metadata on WordPress or in WordPress. And that's what this is, post metadata. So now if we go to the front page or to the page after we've saved it and refresh, we will see nothing has changed. We now have this extra post metadata, but we're not actually outputting it. Now we need to start outputting it and getting it to appear on the page. And ideally, to make this information appear on the website, you're gonna update the single.php file. That is, if you're gonna make this appear on posts, you can also make this work for custom post types. But ideally, you're gonna make it in a child theme, so your parent theme files are safe from your editing. Um, I'm gonna do this in my InMotion hosting account. You can do this via FTP if you're more comfortable with that. Now I'm in the cPanel of InMotion. I'm gonna click on File Manager to open the File Manager go to public underscore HTML, go to wp-content, go to themes, and this is the theme that we're working with right now, and we're gonna make a child theme of this. If you're not familiar with child themes, if you wanna know more information about them and more in depth, I'm not gonna go in depph in this tutorial, I'm just gonna quickly make a child theme, but if you wanna know more, click on the card above, I've got a child theme playlist that'll tell you lots of information about them. They're very, very useful. So do check out that playlist if you haven't yet or don't know what child themes are. I'm just gonna create a new folder and I'm going to call it Travel Light Child. I just used the name of the actual theme and just added dash child on the end. Inside of this folder, I'm going to add a style sheet. I'm gonna make a new, oh, that's a new folder. I'm gonna add a file. I'm gonna call it style.css and I'm gonna create another file and call it functions.php. I'm gonna add a little bit of information within these files. I'm gonna get the information from the WordPress codex, so it's a child theme page. I have a link to this page down below in the description as well, and it's a part of the child theme tutorials where I go more in depth, but I'm just gonna go in here and quickly copy and paste this information. This part goes into the child theme, or sorry, the style sheet. It's gonna edit the style sheet and paste that in. It's going to update this from 2015 to what the actual theme is called, Travel Light. I'm not going to add that. You don't have to have all these things, but what you do have to have for sure is this right here, the template. And this, whatever string of characters you have here, has to match the folder name of the theme exactly. So this is the folder name, Travel-Light. And this has to match that exactly, otherwise this will not work. Everything else is kind of supplemental. You don't really need any of these things. I'm just gonna take them out for now. Again, I go more in depth in the child theme playlist, so check that out. 
This is what's going to allow the child theme to appear in the appearance section or the theme section of the WordPress dashboard. Now inside of the functions file, we have to do something as well. So we're going to open that, go back to this themes page, and we're going to copy this piece of code right here. And what this does is it brings in the parent style sheet. If we don't do this, the site isn't going to have any CSS. It's going to look terrible. And what this does is it brings in the parent style sheet so that when you activate the child theme, it looks the exact same as this, for example. So now I'm going to activate that child theme now that we have those created. Go to appearance and then themes. We'll have a new entry with no thumbnail, which is right here called Travel Light. This is our child theme. And in the child theme tutorials, I'll show you how to create a thumbnail. Here's an example on the right hand side over here. So you can create your own custom thumbnails. I'm just going to click on activate to get that thing activated. And then we're going to see if everything went right. If we refresh this page, it should look the exact same as it does right now. And it does. So now our child theme is active, looks the exact same. Now we can start editing the files or bringing files into the child theme to edit. And the way we do that is if we go to our travel light parent theme, we want the single.php file because that's the one that's used to create posts. I'm just going to click on it to highlight it. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it into my child folder. And now what happens is because the child theme is running, WordPress is first going to look in the child theme folder for a file. If it finds it, it will load that file. If it doesn't find it, it's going to load the file from the parent theme. So whatever changes we make to this file, they aren't changed in the parent theme. So you're not breaking the parent theme in case you need to revert back to it or in case there are updates that are made to the parent theme. But this one will be loaded before or will be loaded because it's here and the parent one won't be loaded. So let's just open this up and edit it. And we see our information here. We see the, the title is being output right here. If we close some of these tabs because there's a lot of them. Let's close that one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All right. Now the title is right here. That is what this piece of code is outputting. The time we have right here, February 11th, 2018. And then we have by the person who wrote it. And then we have the tags. So if we wanted to add the weather into this area right here, like I said, we did a moment ago, into this area right here, this is where we start doing it. So if I just create another H5 tag, just like they've done, keep the same format, at least at first, just to get the data in there, then we can tweak it, at, tweak it later. It's going to say test and see where the word test is going to be output. Save that file, refresh this page, and the word test is right here. Now, I think I want to put this right below the author. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Not sure why we have two H5 closing tags. Copy and paste this or cut it, I should say. Put it right after the author, which ends right here. Paste it right there. Save changes. Refresh this page. Now it's right after the author. Again, the spacing and stuff that can be tweaked later. Let's just get the data onto the page. And now what we can do, because we have a location for this information, is get the script from the blog. The blog is linked to down below. I've written this to output the weather. Again, this is not theme dependent. You can write this without the theme. So I already wrote this. This is PHP code. And what it's doing is it's creating a variable for the weather and it's getting post meta from the current post ID and it's getting the weather field. Now this weather right here has to match exactly what you have entered right here. That is the same string of characters. So as long as there's a value in there for, for weather, in this case sunny, it's going to add that to the weather variable. And then 
This if statement checks whether there actually is a value in there. If there isn't, nothing will happen. If there is a weather variable, I have this little sentence written, the weather when I wrote this colon, and I'm going to have the weather value output right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this whole thing. Got to make sure you have the opening and closing PHP tags. And I'm going to paste it right here, right where the word test is. Just paste it right there. I know this doesn't look very nice, but this isn't actually output on the page. This is just PHP processing this information. I like to add some spacing just to get it to look a little nicer and at least have it lined up to where you can tell where stuff goes and where it's incremented and where it's nested. I like to just clean it up a little bit because one day you might come back into this file and not know what's going on if it's very messy. So I also have included some comments. These forward slashes are comments this code is not executed or this text. This is just for your information. You can actually delete it if you wanted to, but it's just telling you what each step does. And this is an HTML code, or sorry, an HTML comment, and this is a PHP comment, and it's just telling you what it does. I'm gonna click on save changes, and this should work out of the box, and it should include that sentence, the weather when I wrote this, colon, and then the word sunny. So if I refresh this page, and if nothing went wrong, we have weather when I wrote this, colon, sunny. Now just to prove to you that's what it's doing, I'm just going to change this to windy and update that and refresh this page. And now the word sunny will be the word windy. And there we have it. And now if we don't add a value, let's just test that. So at a value of zero, this may not work as planned because usually you would not even add that entry onto the page because you add the custom fields manually every time. So you wouldn't even have the weather in there, but this should still not show up because it's a zero value for the weather. So the script should make it so that sentence does not appear and it doesn't because the value is zero. And that's what I was saying earlier where the script knows if there's a value or not. So it doesn't look goofy if you have a post with a bunch of sentences that are incomplete or a bunch of pieces of data that are incomplete. So let's change it to rainy and now the sentence should be back. And there we have it. So we're outputting that custom field onto the page and it's already styled because it's within that code block. If you put it in other places, you might not have it styled, which I'm going to show you right now, but this one was styled. So that's pretty handy. So the second output right here that I have, this is what we're going to use to output the cost, the friendliness, and the cleanliness. Let's just copy this whole thing. And actually, before I do that, we should have figured out a spot to put it. I think I want to put it below the featured image and above the actual content on the post. So right in between those two. So let's find out where that is being created in the template. We have right here the post thumbnail, that's the featured image. And then the content is right here. That's the actual text that you put into right here, the WordPress editor. So I'm going to just, again, just to be safe, write the word test, just to make sure I know where this is going. And it should be going right here. Before you do a lot of coding and programming and tweaking, you should always make sure it's going in the right spot. So there's the word test, that's where we want it. So I'm gonna replace the word test with that code from the blog. I'm going to add a bunch of spaces so it's easier to read. There, it's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. So I'm just gonna go through what this piece of code is doing. This is the opening PHP tag, so that's where we start our code. We create the variable of cost and we get the post metadata of cost. And again, this piece of text right here, the string of characters has to match exactly what you have for cost in the name field. So if you've got to copy and paste those back and forth, that's what you have to do. But you got to make sure it matches exactly. The second one is the friendliness value. The third one is the cleanliness. 
And then we have a if statement, which says if cost, and these double pipe characters mean or, if cost or friendliness or cleanliness have a value, then we go through the next portion of this code. If none of them have a value, then it stops right here and nothing is output, just like we saw earlier with the weather. And then we go through also and individually output each one, whether they exist or not. So we have a unordered list HTML tag here. Then we check if there's a cost value. If there is a cost value, we add a list item of cost followed by the value of the cost. If there is not a value for the cost, we have an else statement here and we do nothing. And it's the same thing for the other two. If friendliness has a value, we output the friendliness list item. If not, we do nothing. If cleanliness has a value, we output the cleanliness list item. And if there isn't a value for that, we do nothing. And then at the very end, we close our unordered list, and then the code is done. We have an error message on the right. Not quite sure what that is. Got to figure out that what that is first. Otherwise, the page likely won't work properly. Okay, so we're missing an closing curly bracket right here before the else. And now our error message is gone and we are good to go. We're gonna click on save changes and hope that this was output in the right place and didn't break the page. And when I say break the page, if you make an error in the PHP, your page will more than likely be blank. And that would include every page where this template is loaded. And if you have a lot of blog posts, that would potentially be a lot of pages. Luckily, all you have to do to fix it is just undo what you did, save the template again. Or if it was really bad, you can go back into the parent theme and copy the single.php file back into your child theme to go back to the original version and then start again. Going to refresh this page and hope our data is output. So we have an error. This is something that will happen if there's something wrong in the PHP code. And luckily, it tells us where the error is in this case. It says line 77 of the single.php file. So if we go to line 77, which is down here. That's actually not helpful because that's not code we're playing around with. But what we have to do, most commonly the, the error is either a character in the wrong spot or PHP tags that aren't open and closed properly. And I see right away, because I've done PHP for quite a while, that I don't have the closing curly bracket. We open the curly bracket up here for the main if statement right here, but we never actually close it, which is normally done at the very end. So if I add in the closing curly bracket and then save and then refresh, now we have our page here and the data is being output. We have the cost, which is $2 signs. Friendliness is very friendly. Cleanliness is spotless. And again, you, make, you can make these sentences. You can have these appear wherever you want, really. And you can just change the sentences in here. So friendliness, you could have this be a sentence. So the staff was and then you have the output here. You could add in while I was there. So you can have text wrapped around it. You can have it as a colon. You can pick it as a list or a paragraph or there's so many different ways to do this. But the bottom line is we have the code output right here. And I checked on the blog post, this closing curly bracket is actually there. So don't worry about the code, the code works. I just deleted it for some reason or somehow while I was rearranging things in here. Now we have an output and maybe this appearance of output is exactly what you want, but I want to change it so it's horizontal and a little cleaner. So we have the white box around it kind of matching up with the theme. I'm going to copy this for this back into our file so that we can stick with the example. All right, so we just need to update a little CSS. And I wrote a little CSS for this already, which I have on the blog posts. And again, you might not want the CSS exactly because you might want it to display much differently. But basically the CSS uses the important details class selector, adds a margin on the bottom, makes the background white, it displays it as a table, uses clear both because we're gonna float them in just a second. The, uh, the individual list items, Right here, we float them to the left and we use the clear both to make sure that the box isn't floated as well. When that, when that happens, the box is misaligned compared to the content. And I'm just going to take the CSS and copy it into someplace in the theme 
probably in the style sheet since I don't have a theme options panel. So I'm going to open the style sheet and I'm just going to paste that code in here. Save changes and then refresh this page. And we should now have this styled much more closely to the actual content. And that's how we do that. And again, styling is completely up to you. You're not going to want my example for your styling. And I don't know what you want for your styling. So if you leave a comment down below and let me know what you want, I can probably help you figure it out. Or if you think I should make a CSS basics playlist, I can make that as well. So you can learn the basics of CSS and just code whatever kind of styling you want or match whatever kind of styling you have on your website. But at the end of the day, this is how we add custom fields. Now, if we want to create a new post, if we go to add new, let's call this custom field testing. This is a test. And then in the custom fields, we have to enter a new one. Ours may appear in here, they may not. Cleanliness does, the others don't. So I'm just going to manually add them. It's very important, as I'm sure you probably guessed, that in this column, weather, cost, friendliness, cleanliness, those are written the exact same way every time. So if you're having an issue where your custom field data is not appearing on the front end, double check that the words in here or the string of characters in here matches the string of characters in the code right here where we're pulling the get post meta and we're pulling in those strings to fill our variables. So make sure that they are spelled exactly the same, otherwise it will not work. I'm going to publish this and see how that looks on the output. I'm not going to add a featured image. This shouldn't depend on a featured image, although it might because of that blue thing that hovers over the featured image. But we're going to test it anyway without the image and cross our fingers. Still works. Like, looks like they have a default featured image. So the weather when I wrote this was pouring, and then our other data is output down here. And just like with the weather, this is the last thing, where when the weather wasn't there, if we take out say friendliness, and we don't enter a value for that, let's, let's just delete it altogether, and we update it. The script detects that we don't have a value for friendliness, and it doesn't add it into here. So let's refresh this page, and now friendliness will be gone. And in that way, when you don't fill in all the data, or you want to fill in the data later, it doesn't break anything. You can just fill it in whenever you have it ready, and you're good to go. Now, custom fields are very powerful, as I'm sure you can imagine, and I don't know your exact use case, so leave a comment down below if you have specifics that I didn't address in this tutorial, and we'll see if you can figure those out. If there's enough demand for specific things, I can make a custom tutorial just for that specific use case. But either way, leave a comment down below. So that's how we do it. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the private Facebook group and the link in the description down below. And next up, check out one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it. And I will see you in the next video.